I want to consider now how to read and write data to and from a simple text file. So load up the program text read and here you can see one way of doing it. So you'll see some familiar functions and procedures here. I first of all check that the file exists. In Lazarus I use file exists UTF-8 for cross-platform compatibility but the file exists function will also do in most cases if you're just using Windows. Then I assign the file. This is the same way that I assign the file, the file name to a file variable in the previous example, but this time my file is defined to be a text file. I reset the file, that means I open it for reading. If I wanted to open it for writing, to write data into it, I could use rewrite. And now I set up a while loop. This loop runs while not EOF. EOF tests for the end of the file, so it runs until all the data in the file has been processed. Now here I could read one character at a time using the read procedure, or I could write using write, but there's an option to read or write a whole line using readlin, readln, or writelin, writeln. And that's what I've done here. I've read in a whole line at a time, and I've assigned a line, that's a string that runs up to the carriage return of a line in the file. I've, I've assigned that to the line variable and just added it to my memo. And finally, I've closed the file. When you're working with a memo, in fact, there's a simpler way of doing this because memos know all about text files and they have built-in functions. It's actually thanks to its lines property, which is of the t-strings data type. You don't need to know too much about exactly how that works. Just know how to use this way of loading and saving data to and from a memo in your own code. So it's really very, very simple. So here's my program. I click this button. So when I click the load from file button, it once again checks that my file exists. If so, it just loads all the text data from the named file using memo1, which is the memo, lines, which is its t-strings property, dot load from file. So the load from file function does the entire process. It relieves me of any programming problems by just loading it up all in one fell swoop. And save to file works in much the same way. So I can verify that. Running the program. This is the longhand way that I showed originally where I do all the text file processing myself. And sure enough, it reads in the file. Let me just delete that. Now I'll use the memos lines dot load from file function. And that works. And I can also use this to save it to a file. And you can verify how that works by running the program yourself. Now here's an example of a program that both loads and saves text data, but it modifies the data in the process. It loads one character at a time and it changes the character before writing it into a new file. This is a very simple encryption program. And it really is far too simple for, for real world use. There are all sorts of very clever ways of doing really secure encryption and this doesn't pretend to be that. The point of this is to show how to load characters and modify them and manipulate both an input and an output file in the same program. So I start off, I declare this constant magic num. This could be some arbitrary number and I'm just going to use it by adding it to the code, to the ASCII code of each character so that when it's written back into a new file, the character is not going to be the same as the original. I just declare some file names up here, which I'll use in my program. And I look at the encrypt procedure. So this is what runs when I click the encrypt button. And it once again, it checks if the file exists. It gets the input file. The input file in this case is the, well, it's actually the Pascal source that you can see here. It's the text.io.paz file. I've declared it 
at the top here and there's a number of familiar looking routines here again assign file reset now notice that I assign two files here I assign, assign one for the input file and one for the output file and then I reset the input file for reading I'm going to read data from it and I rewrite the output file that's for writing because that's the file I'm going to write data into now here's another of my while loops very similar to the one we saw in the previous program it just goes reading the characters in this case not whole lines of text but characters until it reaches the end of the file of the input file so now it calls read and it reads from the input file one character at a time and then it writes into the output file that character but its odd value its ascii code is incremented by magic num and that, that's the number I declared earlier on which happens to be 17 it could be some other value if you wished so in effect it goes 17 places up the ASCII table and writes the character it finds there into the output file and then it closes both files and the decryption is very simple that just reads through the characters in the decrypted file and it subtracts the number that was added to them and writes back the unencrypted version of the text of each character back into another file. One thing I'll just mention here is that you'll see that I've used the ANSI char data type instead of the simple char data type. I've explained that in the little book of Pascal, the ebook that comes with this course, but fundamentally it's to avoid problems that would occur in some cases if you try to write characters that go into the upper reaches of the ASCII uh, character set. Uh, so let's try it out. So remember my input file is this Pascal file itself. And I encrypt it. That's by adding 17 to each character code and writing out the character that corresponds to that new character code. And I can see the results by looking in Explorer. Here's the file I've just written. And you can see it's largely meaningless. Right, now to test that this does what I think it does, the next stage is to decrypt it. So now I'm going through all the characters in this encrypted file. And I'm subtracting my encryption factor, my magic number that I added to the codes in order to create those characters. And all being well, when I write the new file, it should be identical to the original source code file. So let's try it out. Decrypt. And you can see it's written this new file here. Fingers crossed that should be the same as the Pascal file. And things are looking promising. you can see that it is, in fact, the same as the original file before it was encrypted. So, as I say, this is not a serious example of encryption that you could use if, if you wanted to enforce security on your own files. That's not the point. The point is to show how to read and write text data one character at a time and process the contents of a text file.